on, it's course registration season again. So if you're trying to decide between AP Biology and AP Environmental Science or AP Bio and APES, this video is for you. Even if you're just thinking about the courses that you wanna take over the course of your high school career, hopefully I'll be able to provide some great insights. Now I do have teaching experience in AP Biology. It's one of my favorite courses to teach. So I'll try not to be too biased as I go through my breakdown, but I think I found some pretty objective measures to compare the two courses. So the five factors I'm gonna first go through are pass rate, student numbers, college credit, content, and labs. And I've got some interesting data points to compare the two courses for all of these. Another tricky thing about looking at AP Environmental Science and AP Bio side by side is that they're not always offered at the same school or in the same way. Often AP Biology is only an elective choice, whereas AP Environmental Science can be taken in place of a core class if you're taking an environmental science class and you have the option to level up to AP in a junior or senior year of high school. Now this all depends on where you are, so be sure you watch this thinking about what you have available to you at your school. All right, so here we go. Now I looked directly at comparing the 2022 numbers of AP Environmental Science and AP Biology for these first few data points, but I do want to point out that both the AP Biology and AP Environmental Science scores went up from 2021 to 2022. AP Bio went up by a lot and the pass rates for AP Environmental Science went up by a little. And the scale of comparison differs every year, score rates are going to fluctuate. But with the most recent data, AP Biology had a pass rate of 67.9% and AP Environmental Science had a pass rate of 53.8%. That means that more students scored a three, four, or five on the AP Bio exam than did the students scoring a three, four, or five on the AP Environmental Science exam. The same thing goes for fives. AP Bio had a five rate of 15% of students taking the exam getting a five, whereas AP Environmental Science had a five rate of 8.9% of the students last year earning this score. Now, when we're comparing this data set, we wanna make sure we know how many students overall took each exam. And AP Bio actually had a larger number of students and usually does overall in the United States and across the globe who are taking this test. So in total, AP Bio had over 237,000 students take the exam last year, where AP Environmental Science had over 179,000 students taking the exam. Now this could be a pro or a con depending on the way you look at it. Maybe you want a larger number of resources and people who are out there on the internet who you can reach out to for help. Maybe you want classes that are bigger or that you have more options. Maybe you're at a school where there might be multiple teachers teaching the subject. Maybe you want a smaller amount of students that are taking this exam so that you stand out better on college applications. This means that it's rarer to have a student who has gotten a three, four, or five on an AP Environmental Science exam than for a student to have done well in AP Biology. So if you want to stand out, you might want to go with environmental science here. What's interesting about these pass rates is that overall, anecdotally, from students that have taken AP Environmental Science first and then have come to me to take AP Biology, in their experience in general, they think that AP Environmental Science is easier. Now that could just be the rigor of the course that I taught and the standards I had for my students, that could be the particular students, but the general consensus I've had in conversations feels like AP Environmental Science is an easier exam. This is not supported by data, so take it with a grain of salt. The next important thing that you might want to consider when comparing these two exams is how many colleges actually take exam scores and accept them as credit for actual college courses. You could take an AP exam, have it look good on your transcript when you're applying to colleges, but if you actually want to put that score to use, you want to see if the colleges you're applying to will accept that score and have you be able to use it as part of your college credits. So for AP Biology, currently on the College Board's database, there are 1,955 schools who will accept a three, four, or five for some amount of college credit at a particular institution. Now out of those, 30 of them require actually getting a five, but that's not that bad. The rest of them will take a three or a four. For AP Environmental Science, there are 1,731 schools, so still a good amount that are listed on the College Board's website that are accepting this particular exam in place of college credit, and only 18 of them actually require you to have a five in order to get that college credit. If you're curious about the colleges and universities that you're interested in and you want to see if they accept any of these exams or scores for college credit, you can look on the College Board's website and search in their database. I'll put the link in the description below. Next up, the content. Now, if we're just going by units, AP Environmental Science has more units. They have nine total units and AP Biology has eight. In AP Environmental Science, the last unit, the final unit, is actually most heavily weighted on the exam. So that may be something that you might be worried about if you feel like the course is not moving fast enough to get everything covered in time for the exam. AP Biology, the units are a little bit more balanced, but, but all of them could show up on the AP Biology exam in a major way. Now, because these are both AP Science courses, we have to talk about labs, and both courses actually have a suggested amount of lab time being 25 
25% of the overall course be devoted to doing inquiry-based labs in your classroom. Now, not every school is actually going to equal this 25%, especially when it comes down to materials and teacher's experience with the course and the actual labs. AP Biology suggests about two labs per unit, so that's eight total minimum labs that you should be doing throughout the year. AP Environmental Science does not get that specific, but they do have some suggested activities you can do. There is no set list of particular labs that your teacher has to do with you as part of the course. So if you're somebody who likes labs, know that hopefully you're guaranteed about eight of them in AP Biology, at least if the teacher is doing what they're supposed to. And in AP Environmental Science, there are opportunities to go outside and be in the field, but again, nothing is specific or required for the course. Okay, so when it comes down to it, these numbers do paint one picture of comparing these two courses, but there's a few other factors you might wanna consider when you're deciding between the two courses. If you're concerned about getting preparation for a career or a major later down the road, think about what course most closely aligns with what you wanna do. Do you wanna do something more ecology or environmental focused? Well, AP Environmental Science is probably the course you should take in high school. Ecology is covered a little bit in the AP Bio course, but it is the last unit and sometimes gets rushed at the end of the year. Think about the teachers who teach that course at the school. Usually it's the same teachers year after year. These teachers are usually trained by the college board in teaching the course, but different teachers have different rigors and standards for their class and different ways of grading. So ask around at your school and see which teachers are in charge of each of these classes. You also want to think about if your friends are taking the course at the same time as you. Sometimes it's nice to have a support group. Other times, if you don't want to be distracted, maybe you want to take the course at a time when your friend group is not taking it as well, but it might be nice to have people to reach out to who you know have taken the course in the past, especially for an AP class where more than likely there will be a point in the course that is challenging at some point in the year. Next, you definitely want to ask about workload and rigor. How hard is the course? How much time are you devoting to reading or reading quizzes or labs or lab write-ups? And figure out what that balance is going to be for you and all of your other courses that you're interested in. AP classes are a lot of work, and I do have a video on how many AP courses I should take. Make sure you check that out. I'll link it in the description below. Finally, math is a big consideration, especially for students taking AP science courses. Some students love math, some students do not like it, um, but both courses actually do involve a good amount of math. For AP environmental science, it's a lot of algebraic math. There are some equations that you'll practice with throughout many of the units. And part of the free response section, there is definitely one calculation section. There is one question where you're gonna have to do calculations specifically on the exam. These are things like population growth, rate of change, rule of 10, rule of 70, percentages, things that you might have already been familiar with in maybe other science classes, but you're gonna have to be really familiar with them when you get to AP Environmental Science and practice them throughout the year. There is a calculator allowed on the AP Environmental Science exam and on the AP Bio exam, which is a little bit different. You're still doing a lot of algebraic math, but also some statistics, and you're dealing with probabilities sometimes, and maybe some unit conversions, like in AP Environmental Science science. The math is different, but I wouldn't say one course is more challenging math-wise than the other. AP Biology does have a pretty extensive formula sheet that goes along with the exam, and hopefully by the time the exam rolls around, you'll be familiar with all of the formulas on the formula sheet and how to apply them in context of the exam. I hope this has helped shed some light on the difference between AP Biology and AP Environmental Science and help you make your decision for the courses that you want to take in your high school career. What courses do would you like me to compare next? I already have a video on AP Biology versus AP Chem, so be sure to check that out if you'd like to see more. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful, and I'll see you later.